Good morning, and welcome to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church, our 10 o'clock worship experience, where we are, of course, in person to all of our friends here and online. We will remind you, we still are wearing masks at this time to protect ourselves and others, so thank you for joining us with that practice. Um, I will remind you of a few things happening this week and in the upcoming days. So we are still allowing ministries to meet in person here at the church. If you have a ministry that uh, would like to meet here, we ask that you fill out an event form two weeks or more before with the church office. You can call or email um, or stop by to get one of those forms. And we would love to give you a space to meet if you're a group affiliated with this church. This week, we will have a Facebook Live. Pastor Perrin is back from vacation this week, so you will see him and not all of our shenanigans. Some of you, of you are probably excited about that. Some of you might be sad. I think the cow was my best work. Um, thank you. Uh, vaccine registration. If you have not gotten a vaccine and are struggling to get registered for one, please contact our parish nurse, Missy Rogers. She would be happy to help coordinate that with you. And then today we were super excited to have the Reverend Dr. Janet Bell Odom here of the United Methodist Church. She has preached at this church many times, and we are excited to have her back today. I'll also remind you that next Sunday at the 10 o'clock worship is our backpack blessing. So if you... Uh, are going to school, if you're a teacher, a student of any age, or pursuing any degree, we invite you to bring your bags, and we will bless them. We've got a fun tag and a couple of fun things happening, so we'd love to see everyone next Sunday. Um, we will, of course, be following guidelines. And then we are still accepting surveys from those who have really anyone 12th grade and under to help us form what our ministry to those students and children look like this fall. So please fill out the survey. It's available in the e-blast, the newsletter, and it is on Facebook. And then finally this week, we have some birthdays coming up. We have Blake Wine, Roy McGowan, Carol Dimmler, Dan Rowe, and Joshua Glover. So don't forget to wish them a happy birthday. Well, good morning to you folks. At this time, if we may, stand up, worship, clap our hands, stomp our feet, hum as vigorously as you can, but still refrain from singing. I promise you, we'll get to singing very soon, but this time, let us worship.
Teach me some melodious Sunday Sung by flaming tongues above Fade the mount, I'm fixed upon it Mount of life, redeeming Thank you. Thank you so much for having us here this morning to be able to open our eyes, to be able to lift our hands, to be able to breathe, to be able to see, to be able to hear, and to be able to praise, praise, praise your name, dear Lord. We thank you for all of these things. As we go into our service and to our worship, dear Lord, let us learn, let us be able to take these things into heart, and let us be able to teach those that would like to be taught. For we have this space, dear Lord, to take our love and to take it to others, not just within these walls, but outside the walls as well, dear Lord. As always, let us be refreshed. Let us be renewed. Let us be restored. It is your name that we pray forever and evermore. Amen. Please be seated.
And at this time, folks, if you may please welcome our guest preacher, Dr. Janet Bell Odom. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Gosh, it's so glad, good to be back with you guys. Um, I, I, I really love coming to Lake Highland uh, Presbyterian Church, and I want to <coughs> first thank uh, your pastor, uh, Dr. Perrin uh, Rice, for the invitation one, one more time to be here. Um, and, uh, you know, we're in these trying times in our lives and in the world today. And, you know, it's, uh, I'm glad to be able to be here as we are masked up, but God is still able. Amen? God is able, and we are going to continue to praise God because God is able. Um, I was telling the children's minister this morning that I'm an extrovert, so it's been killing me to stay at home. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a real extrovert. But, you know, it is what it is, and uh, we have to stay safe. And so I'm glad that we had an opportunity today to kind of get out a little bit uh, and be with one another. So I am very, very thankful to you to accept me to come and preach the word as your pastor and family are on vacation. Um, it is always good to be able to spread and, and speak the word of God. And so I am happy to be here. Um, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our healer, our redeemer, um, the love of our lives because we are spiritual people. And so I'm glad to be able to be here. So we're going to look at a piece of scripture this morning. Uh, and it comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 13. Um, as you know, when you come, when I come here, I don't know if this is the first time that you've seen or heard me preach, but I always ask um, my whoever I'm preaching to. I'm, you know, I've been retired for a couple of years, but I do a still a lot of preaching around in different churches. But even as I preach, then my, my churches always ask the congregation to stand in honor of the Lord as we read the, the scripture. Gospel of Luke, the 11th chapter. Verses 1 through 13. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, them When you pray, say, God, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Give us our forgive us of our sins, for we also Forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go out to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And for everything everyone has asked will receive, and one who seeks find, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your fathers, of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will you give God in heaven, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you please be seated? Holy God, we thank you today for this gathering. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that we feel in this place today. 
I pray for each and every one of my sisters and brothers that are present, God. And I pray right now that you will open up their hearts, their minds, and their, whole, their souls to receive your word. Hide me behind your holy garment so that they might see you and not me and be blessed by your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, we're going to spend a few minutes um, with this uh, topic. What's on your hook? What's on your hooks? Prayer is an act of petitioning and, and praying and giving thanks and confession, confessing to God. Prayer can be individual or corporate. Prayer can be oral or silent. Prayer is a conversation between persons and God. Amen? Prayer is a necessary food, uh, a, a survival kit for all uh, true believers of the gospel. Paul tells us to devote ourselves to prayer and being watchful and thankful. Prayer of the righteous woman or man is powerful and effective. No prayer, no power. Can you repeat with me? No prayer, no power. Prayer for all of us is not a strange or rare thing, right? Because that's what we do as, as believers. We pray. Amen? Uh, for it has been those prayers that have brought us prayed by our fathers, our, our, our mothers, our forefathers, our foremothers, our, our auntie, auntie Besses and, and, aunt, and Uncle Joes that, that have brought us thus far. Amen? But after all the prayers have been prayed for us, we still find ourselves sometimes in need of prayer. Because why? Because many of us do not even know how to pray, Right? I have had people in my churches, I said, well, I want you to end the prayer. Will you please come and pray? And they, and, and they say, no, Pastor. I mean, no, no, Pastor. We can't, I can't do that. Afterwards, I asked, why can't you pray? And they said, I'm afraid to pray. I'm, I'm afraid to pray. And I says, why are you afraid to pray? I really don't know how to pray. Pray is praying is a conversation with God. Everybody can have a conversation. If you and I can talk to one another, certainly you can talk to God. Amen? One day, a girl was watching a holy woman praying at the banks of the river. And when the holy woman finished uh, her prayer, the girl, girl went over and asked the holy woman to teach her how to pray. The holy woman looked at this girl's face real, real hard and studied her face carefully. And then she gripped the girl by, by, by her hand and then and with her hands and he, she threw, him, threw her in the water and plunged her forcefully in the water. And the girl struggled frantically to get out of the water, trying to free herself, just trying to free herself in order to breathe. And finally, the holy woman brought her up out of the water and the little girl says, what, 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 what was that for? Why did you keep me under the water? What was that for? Tell me, why did you do me like that? And the holy woman said, when you long to pray as much as you long to breathe when your head is under the water, only then will I be able to teach you how to pray. Only then will I be able to teach you how to pray. The scripture this morning, my sisters and brothers, is we find Jesus with the disciples. After Jesus prays, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, one of the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Now, remember, these are disciples of Jesus Christ that have been walking with Jesus Christ and looking at Jesus doing his miracles and all of the wonderful things that Jesus was, has, had been doing and continue to do. But they wanted to know how to pray. Do not think that you are any different than disciples. They were with Jesus Christ. They were walking with Jesus Christ, and they asked, teach me how to pray. And so Jesus said, I'll do that. I'll teach you how to pray. 
we forget that we are to learn to pray. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a learning thing. That prayer is a learned behavior, and many, uh, many things that, that, that we do, like prayer, it comes with consistency, constancy, with persistence, with perseverance. Uh, a, a, a speech rising out of, into prayer distinguishes a, ch a child of God from a child of this world. Did you not know that? These disciples ask and they received from Jesus Christ what they requested. It was a regular custom of the rabbi to teach the, the disciples a simple prayer, which, which they might have used uh, and, as a habit. The, the John the Baptist taught his disciples how to pray, and when Jesus' disciples saw that John was teaching his disciples how to pray, then they see the, Jesus, the disciples of Jesus asked him to do the same thing for them. It's all right to ask the Lord to do something for you. It's all right to ask the Lord to do something for me. See, we think that once we are saved, once we, we know what we're going and where we're going, once we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we think that we have it all, right? Or even if we don't have it all, we don't want anybody to know it. Amen? <laughs> but we're only human. We're saved by grace. We don't know everything. And as we grow into our, our spiritual beings, we need to ask the Lord. Ask Reverend, uh, uh, Dr. Perrin. He'll help you. He will be happy to help you. Don't keep it to yourself. So Jesus teaches what? The Lord's Prayer, if we look at the scripture this morning. Someone has said that the Lord's Prayer has two great uses in our private prayer. Listen to this. If we use it, uh, the prayer, at the time or the beginning of our devotions, it, it awakens all kinds of holy desires, which, which leads us on into a, the right pathway to our prayer. It, 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 if we use it at the end of our devotion, it sums up all we ought to pray for in the presence of God. So we can use it two ways. Usually sometimes in churches we just pray and that's it and we go home. But if you pray before, if you use the, 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 holy, the, the Lord's Prayer before you even ask God for anything, amen, it opens up all kinds of things for you, amen. And if you don't remember to do it at the beginning, do it at the end. After we do our petitions and after we uh, ask God and thank God for everything that, that, we, that, that God has done for us, end it with the Lord's Prayer. Two ways. It kind of sums up everything. After Jesus had taught his disciples how to pray, he went to speak uh, uh, to them in a parable. This seems to, to cast a new light on, on some of the, the relationships of God's human, humankind uh, to, to God, and, and which is the effective uh, way of praying, this mystery agency called prayer. Jesus teaches his disciple the power uh, to produce the effective, more effective, wanted prayer of uh, 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 what we want through prayer. He taught them the effectiveness of prayer. He tells them and us this morning about a traveler on the journey. In the late evening, the traveler often did uh, not avoid, uh, they did, they, they, they traveled at night to avoid all the hot heat uh, during the day, like, we have, we, like we've been having in Dallas for the last couple of, of, of weeks. You know, we get, we get spoiled. We had a wonderful summer, and then all of a sudden we had 101 degrees, and then we said it's hot, right? I told someone as I was coming in, I said, I, from walking from the driveway to the, to, uh, to the church, I am hot. So, so in the ancient days, they, they traveled at night in order not to be in, in the heat of the day. So during the, 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 after this, 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 this man, uh, this friend needed uh, to, 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 to feed the traveler, amen, but did not have the bread. Confronted with the embarrassing situation, he went to a friend to borrow some bread to feed the traveler. When he, when he arrived at his friend's house, he noticed that the door was shut. No one would knock on the door unless it, it, was, it, was, it was very important that they knocked on the door because everybody was closed and, 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 and sleep and, and shut. So no one would go and knock on anybody's door unless it was necessary. So he knocked just to be told by his friend to go away because his door was already locked. 
the man would not go away because he was persistent and shameless and and shamelessly and he and and his and the and the the housekeeper arose and gave him what he needed this parable teaches us the nature of the true prevailing prayer prayer which gains its its end it is a prayer that which continues to knock and knock and knock and knock until the door is open prayer of our ancestors my ancestors would pray uh, until they were free prayers that that we can hear through the songs like praying and singing kumbaya kumbaya my lord kumbaya sooner will be dinner with the troubles of the world uh, they were persistent and faithful until they were able to see their freedom Prayers from Brother uh, Charles Tinley prayed when he was standing in the need of prayer. When the storms of life are raging, amen, stand by me, stand by me. The, when, 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 when the world is tossing and, and, and tossing me back and forth, like a ship upon the, shi- the sea, thou art rulers of uh, wind and, and water, stand by me. In the midst of faults and failures, when I do not uh, the best I can, my friends misunderstand, thou knowest all about me. Stand by me. When Sister uh, uh, Margaret Duro in the need of prayer prayed, give me a clean heart so that I may serve thee. Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee. For I am not worthy of all these blessings. Give me a clean heart. I will follow thee. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes I'm down. Sometimes I'm leveled to the ground. Please give me, Lord, a clean heart so that I may follow thee. When a when a heart of a child of God has been on a journey, amen, and has gone astray, at midnight, at the greatest darkness, times of darkness and distress, suddenly returns home, it, it comes to itself and feels hungry. This heart, this heart, my sisters and brothers, has ventured away from prayer. It stands in need of prayer. Now it is the time to return to her or his faith in God and with a persistent, amen, prayer life. When you and I are weighed down with heavy burdens, lost for words, I don't know about you, but I've been there several times. Standing in the need of prayer, I don't know about you, but I've been there several times. Lost uh, for words, standing in the need of prayer. We pray, Lordy, 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 have mercy upon me. I don't know how you do it, but that's how I do it. Lordy, 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 have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. Some of you, and I, I know that you uh, know what I'm talking about this morning. Some of you have been there too. This morning, the ones of you that are not, uh, stay tuned because it's on its way. It's a right around the corner. Amen. Life does that to us. I, I don't know about you, but during this COVID time, I just said, Lordy, 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 a whole lot of times. Amen. And standing in the need of prayer because I needed it, amen. I needed it for myself so that I could pray for other people, amen. Amen. I, I have a t-shirt that says, uh, that te- that, that says uh, pray until something happens, amen. Sometimes we just need to pray until something happens. And, and sometimes, you know, you get down on your knees, you pray, you get up, and you just walk around and you just be in constant prayer to God. Just pray until something happens because you know what? It will. It will happen. The prayer which gains its end is a prayer that which knocks until the door is open. Uh, a prayer which uh, seeks to till it obtains is, is one that, 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 will, that will not take a refusal and ask until it, restre- it is received. So as children of God, we ask God, if our prayer is not answered in 24 hours like we think it should be, amen, if it's not answered in 30 minutes like we want it to be, amen, if it's not answered on the date that we give God for an answer, just keep praying. Because your time is not God's time. My time is not God's time. God's time is God's time. Somebody put their hands together and give God some praise. I'll do it. (laughs) There's a story. There's a story of a man and his son that went uh, fishing one day. They they, They put out their lines and went to the cabin, and after an hour they came back. 
and they and they and 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 they they came back and to the river to see if they had caught anything. Amen. Surely enough, there were several fish on the line, and the boy said, "I knew that there would be, Daddy." And Daddy said, "How did you know that?" And the boy replied, "Because I prayed about it." So they put their lines back out in the river again, and they went uh, back to the cabin for for lunch. And so they went, uh, when they came back, and they went to the river again, they pulled their lines up and they saw all these fish, and, and the man said, uh, the, the, uh, the little boy said, oh, he says, uh, look at all the fish. And the, the, the father said, look at all the fish. And they were so excited. And the little boy said, Dad, I knew it was going to happen. He said, how did you know? He says, because I prayed about it. And so the father said, how uh, did you do it? He said, I just prayed about it again and again until it happened. So they pull, put the lines back into the river and went back to the, uh, to the cabin. And bedtime, they went, kind of came down again. This time, no fish. The little child said, I knew there wouldn't be any fish, Daddy. And he said, how did you know? The boy said, I didn't pray this time. And the father said, why didn't you pray this time? And the little boy said, remember, we forgot to put bait on our hooks. We must go to God with bait on our hooks. We, we, we must go to God asking for we, what we wish and, and seeking for what we miss and knocking for, 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 for that, that something that we feel or, or whatever it is that we need will be answered. We got to go to God with bait on our hooks. So what's on your hook today? What's on your hooks Jesus promises in his word that everyone who re asks receives and those who find, uh, seek will find and those who knock, the door will be open. Do we believe in the word of God? Today I came just to give you just a little bit of encouragement, just a little bit of encouragement to let you know that in the midst of everything that we're going through, God is still God. God is still good. God is still on the throne. God is wanting us to knock and knock and knock until we receive. Some of you here this morning may be sitting, thinking, and saying, you said, well, Bill Modem, I've been asking and seeking and knocking for days and years and hours and months, and, and my, our prayers are, 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 haven't been answered yet. They are never answered immediately. Sometimes they are right away, but sometimes they're not immediately. Just hold on and hang on because they will. The good news of the gospel today is that while we are standing in the need of prayer, God already knows our needs better than we do ourselves. God's heart towards us is heart of generous love, and God gives us more than we ask for, and, and what we cannot ask for, God is there to give us that. Don't you see it? Haven't you noticed it? God will give us, even when we wake up in the morning and we see a, gr a bright and a beautiful day, the, God's mercies are there. We did, we, that, that was nothing that we asked for the night before, but that was something that was given to us by God. So, uh, so we, we have a lot to be grateful for, a lot to be thankful for. So God, the, the, this is the good news. God's heart toward us is a generous heart. Uh, God gives us more than we ask for. God gives us everything that we ask for. If you and I do not receive what we pray for, it is not because God, God is grudgingly giving, taking that away from us or keeping it away from us. God has something better planned for us. Sometimes our prayers are so small, but God has something larger to give us, and all we have to do is wait for it. Just wait for it. The answer given may not be the answer we desire or expect, but even when it is a refusal, it is the answer of love and wisdom of God. God does answer our prayers. God is never late. God is always, 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 always on time. Are you standing in the need of prayer today? Is there something that you need? Is there something that you're asking for? Is there something that you need to ask for, but you haven't yet? Are you going to God with something on your hooks? So I want to know. What's on your hooks today? 
Now, that, now that's something that you, you, you don't need to tell me, but that's a question that you need to ask yourself. What is it that I'm going to God with that I'm asking God for? Do I really know? Am I plain and clear about what it is that I want God to bless me for? So, today as we conclude this time together, I'm just going to ask us to all stand together. And we are going to pray the Lord's Prayer. Amen? We are going to pray the Lord's Prayer because God has already taught us how to pray. And so sometimes we just need to practice it among ourselves. Sometimes we need to pray among ourselves. Sometimes we need to believe that God is good all the time in the midst of COVID, in the midst of pain, in the midst of death, in the midst of illness, in the midst of everything negative. There's always something good behind it. Always, always, always. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Your hands are good. Well, it is a blessing to be here with y'all today. Amen. And as we prepare to leave this time, I would just like to thank you again for inviting me to come. And as we are leaving, do not forget your prayers. Do not forget to pray constantly. You know, while you're driving, you can pray. This, this is what I'm going to ask you to do this week. Practice praying in different places. Just pray in different places. Pray on your job. Pray at home. Pray while you're driving. Pray while you're bathing. Pray while you're eating. We all pray while we're eating. But just find some different. Pray while you're walking. Pray over your children. Just put your hands on your children's head and pray. There is something about a conversation with God that cannot take a place of anything else that we do. So that is my prayer for you today. To go this week and pray in different places. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. We thank you, God, and we ask now that you be with us as we leave this place. You are such a good, wonderful God. So bless my sisters and brothers today in a brand new way and let them know as they leave this place that they have been with you and that you are going to be with them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen.